Welcome to Reread, where I'm rereading through the expanded universe in chronological order. Today we're on the Star Wars Episode One Adventures. These were just mail-in things. You could get a big package with, I think, dice and something, and you get to play a game, an adventure book. It came with an adventure book, or you could just read the story, which is why I bought it. I just bought it for the books. Now I hear these are kind of hard to get a hold of, but like I said in my initial review, you don't have to worry about it. They're like small little stories. Now the first four I'm going to talk about are written by Ryder Wynnum, and the first one's called Search for the Last Jedi. This one focuses on Qui-Gon Jinn. Each book focused on one character that you got to play as and do the adventure of. Uh, there's like two chapters that Ryder would write to kind of set up the adventure, and then it goes, okay, now it's your choice. Take on the adventure book or continue on reading the story. I never played this little stupid, it's just a little roll and move or roll and see if you can beat the uh, assassin or the droid or whatever it is and then keep going. I only read the book, so I don't know much about the little game that it came with. I'm sure it wasn't that good, but either way, um, in Search for the Jedi, Qui-Gon is on a mission to go save Adi Gala. She has been captured. The council puts together a bunch of, they put three knights together on the board. They don't want any Padawans going on this because they think it's very dangerous. And you're thinking, well, wouldn't Obi-Wan, he's done a lot of dangerous stuff before, wouldn't he be able to join on this quest? It doesn't bother me too much, but that Obi-Wan was willing to sit on the sidelines. Like, Qui-Gon had to trick Obi-Wan into coming with him. He says, Padawan, come here, help me, this, the, this hatch is stuck. And so the uh, Obi-Wan walks into the ship, and then the hatch closes, and ah, it seems to work now. Now take a seat. You know, because he wants Obi-Wan to come regardless, and Obi-Wan's like, Obi like, wait a minute, didn't the council say no? He said, yes, but I have a feeling you'll be needed on this. Now, Qui-Gon is, you know, in tune with the living force, so he's not going to listen to the council when it comes to the living force, right? But at the same time, looking at some of Jude Watson's books, Obi-Wan does not want to be left on the sideline. In fact, Qui-Gon has to avoid telling Obi-Wan. He has to, you know, leave Obi-Wan so Obi-Wan won't get in trouble because his he knows that his place is by Qui-Gon's side. Now, Qui-Gon says this line to him. Also, he said, your, your place is by my side. And you're thinking, wait a minute, if this was chronological, now here's the thing, Jude Watson's books had not come out by then, so that probably had not been established. I'm not going to knock Ryder Wynnum off, off for that. Points, continuity points off for that. He doesn't get that at all. Um, I'm sure he was just going with what he saw from the movie and writing his story. But that, Obi -Wan, that the council didn't think Obi-Wan was mature enough to take on this um, mission tells me, and also there's a few other things, it tells me this story should be moved in the timeline. So initially, I had this, I believe, after Shadowhunter. Obviously, it's not. I would even put it before Lockdown, but after the Darth Maul comic book series, and I'll explain why in a moment. So Obi-Wan, Qui-Gon, and two other Jedi Knights are on a mission to go save Adi Gala. Qui-Gon uh, tells Obi-Wan that she saved my life once, and Obi-Wan's like, wait, I don't remember this story. And you're thinking, I don't either. I didn't hear about it. And all the other books. Well, is there another adventure where we didn't hear about? Well, I'll get to what that is. It's something that they mention like every book. That Obi-Wan really wants to know what, how did Adi Gala save Qui-Gon's life? Because he doesn't, you know, he's been with Qui-Gon. Was it before? You know, before he was with Qui-Gon? Is that when she saved her life or whatever? And uh, it's not revealed until the last book in this four-part so series here. But anyway, uh, th what's going on is there are 50 hyperspace and uh, no 50 50 starships droid starships with hyperdrives installed into them they're prototypes used for the trade federation now Qui-Gon's wondering what they need what the trade federation needs these for so again at first i thought well maybe this happens before cloak of deception but again i think it happens right after cloak of deception because if they were building an army or anything that would really get the jedi you know questioning but in Cloak of Deception, we know they're, they're allowed to strengthen their defenses, but at the same time, is this above that treaty, above that uh, signature from Cloak? If you're, you're looking at it in chronological order, it's Cloak of Deception. Now that they've been given the okay to increase their fleet, what does that mean? And maybe that would get some questions with the Jedi, because they don't seem really... I mean, they are concerned about why the uh, Trade Federation needs these... It's just 50 uh, droid ships, and they just recently got ordered. Now, I don't think the Trade Federation or in Darth Sidious is in this too, I think at the end. 
you know, want to know you need to cover this up, you need to settle this, or I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna be the one that's gonna, you know, finish this business. So the Nemordians are trying to cover up the whole scandal. And I don't think it's that big of a scandal. So that's why I'm putting it after Cloak of Deception. So maybe the Jerry like, okay, we, we allowed you to build up your army, but what do you need droid hyper, you know, hyper, um, whatever, <laughs> hyperspace engines installed in the droid ships? Why would you need that? Now that's interesting. And so that would perk the Jedi's interest. So they're after these ships. Of course, he comes across these Bartok assassins, which are in insects, because I guess you can kill droids and insects <laughs> in the series. And so as he's killing these uh, insects, he's smushing them or slicing them, they can still be alive when you slice them. So I mean, it's, it's a good idea. And this is not the last time we hear from Bartok assassins here. And so in this one, he's basically going through the adventure of trying to lock down. Qui-Gon comes across, across a lot of people. In fact, one, oh, I love this. He steps into something and a squid comes out. He steps into a hole or home of a squid and the squid comes out and wraps its ar uh, arms around or, or its uh, tentacles around Qui-Gon's leg and starts pulling on him. Well, Qui-Gon's first instinct is to kick him off or ignite the lightsaber and chop him. But then he realizes, wait a minute, remember he's in tune with the living force. I just stuck my foot and crashed into someone's home. If someone attacked me and, and came into my home, you'd probably want to lash out too. So instead of using his lightsaber or kicking it, he goes, he kind of uses the force to say, I'm, I'm very sorry. I did not mean to step in your home. It was an accident. The ocean is yours. You know, I'm, I'm leaving. And so the squid releases him. And I thought that was really neat. You don't get to see that much. So even though this is a children's book that not many people are going to read, Ryder put some really good touches in here, especially concerning Qui-Gon's connection to the Living Force, which is explored in Jude Watson's books. But Ryder Wynnum really shows how much the Living Force has an impact in what Qui-Gon does and how he acts and behaves as a Jedi. All right, you know what? I'm going to stop it right there. I'm going to review each one of these individually, I decided. See you then.